Good morning, class. My name is Mr. Seegers. I do hope that you have turned in your parental permission slips in order to attend this class. This class is sex education. Hello, and as always, welcome to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we are going to talk about lenses slipping in the edger because of a good AR coat. What is AR slip? AR slip is if you have a lens and you have your wheel inside your edger. Now, this is spinning very, very quickly, a couple, you know, thousand RPM or so. Your lens is coming in, your lens blank, and it's just turning real kind of slow. And it's coming in, and it comes in, and it is pretty slow, so it's agonizing, isn't it? And it comes in, and it finally hits this wheel, and this wheel is spinning away, and of course it's an abrasive, it's a roughing wheel, it's gonna tear this lens down. Once it hits, this is fixed on the block, of course, and wedged between the chuck, and when it hits, it has enough force when they are turning against each other that this actually rotates and it actually will spin on the block. The block's holding this in place, hopefully in the correct position, and literally the block stays where it's supposed to be and the lens shifts. But first of all, most high-end premium AR coatings come with a non-slip layer that tries to stop this or prevent it. I would still, if there's any chance of slipping in the edger, I would still do something about it. I would still try to prevent that using the techniques that I'm about to share with you. Trial and error is going to play a piece in this. And to find out how we prevent that, I dug into the Laramie K Optical Film Vault and found the very first training film I ever made. Good morning, class. My name is Mr. Seegers. I do hope that you have turned in your parental permission slips in order to attend this class. This class is sex education. Sex stands for slipping, examples, causes, and solutions. Let's begin class now. First, we will look at some examples. And we'll look at examples first of three things that tell you that you have an AR slipping problem. And one of the telltale signs is sex in non-horizontal positions. Let me give you three examples. Here is a normal single vision lens that I actually had scribed deliberately for a test for this. And you'll notice the relationship of the horizontal line to the block. They're not the same. That lens spun while it was on the block. A segment, a lined segment, the top of the segment makes a great reference point. It should be horizontal and equal to the position of the block going across. In this case, it's not. Obviously, that is not going to be sold to a customer. A progressive lens. A progressive lens has the two outer reference points that mark your 0, 180 line. Those should be in the exact same position as your block when you're done. These are not, hence you've got a piece of trash there. Number two says bumping and grinding. Let me give you a little example of that. The lens feeds in slowly, hits the grinding wheel. The grinding wheel has enough force. It kicks the lens around just a little bit. The lens continues to cut and you end up with really odd shapes like this, which is obviously not something that's going to end up going into a pair of glasses. Number three, a burning sensation. And that looks like this. If the lens spins enough, it will actually burn the non-glare coating. And that looks like a smudge, a fingerprint, a ghost image. You can just make it out. It's kind of hard to capture in, in video like that. But you can kind of make it out there, and that's a telltale sign that you have got a slipping problem. Now, how do we overcome those issues? Number one it says use a protection. Your greatest weapon in the fight against slippage is the 
non-slip intermediate film or anti-slip intermediate film. And I have to call them that. They are sold by a brand name that starts with a big R, but I'd rather not get into trademark issues. Treat those things very gently. They're very, very expensive, so only use them when appropriate. I have found if I try to lay one down nice and flat on the front of the lens multiple times and I just can't get it, I've got that little bit of a wrinkle, I've actually found it better to let the edger pressure smooth that out than try to just keep you know, applying it until you get it right. Just sometimes it just doesn't work. For the back side of a lens, I actually use surface tape. I've always had excellent luck with this. And by this on the roll, it comes in handy for some other things that we'll talk about in other videos down the road. But uh, you can save yourself a whole lot of money if that does work for you. Number two, keep it clean. Keep your blocks clean. Never, ever touch the front surface of a block. You just don't want to do that. Your skin oil gets on it. It gets between the block and the leaf pad, greatly reduces adhesion, greatly increases the chance that you're going to have a slipping problem. So never, ever touch the front of the block with your fingers. From time to time, you can hit them with a little isopropyl alcohol in a rag, making sure that there is nothing on that front surface, kind of refreshes the block a little bit. And you need to get new blocks once in a while. As they age, they dry out. The less pliable the block is, the more prone it's going to be to letting that lens slip. So you just gotta buy new ones once in a while. Number three do not give in to pure pressure. What do we do if something's slipping? We hold on tighter, right? We, we grab onto it. It's not gonna slip then. Well, people tend to wanna do that with their edger as well. Go in, bump the settings way up so that the pressure in the truck chuck comes over and holds that lens firm and you know stronger, doesn't want to twist. Well, that's not the way to do it. Uh, modern edgers are designed specifically with very, very precise pressures for all the different materials. They can sense how much pressure is coming across in relation to the lens thickness. Not a good idea. Don't be tempted to play with pressures. You're only going to end up with damaged lenses. You may perhaps a broken one. Number four, is let's talk about chucking. If you look in this image, the black head of that shaft that comes across, that's the chuck. Those dry out over time. As they dry out, they become stiff. They don't want to grab the lens correctly, and you're going to have slipping problems. So it only takes a second. They are a little bit pricey, but every once in a while, it's well worth swapping those out. The entire setup looks like this. It's actually seven individual pieces, if you want to think about it that way. You have the block chuck, you have your block, you've got your leap pad, you've got your anti-slip intermediate film, obviously you have your AR coating, then you have your lens, you have your AR coating, then you may choose to use an anti-slip film pad again or surface tape, and then you have the head of the chuck. So all in all, the proper setup to avoid slipping issues is a seven-piece setup. One of the other tools that really seems to make a difference in reducing lens slip is the swivel chuck. And that is what a swivel chuck looks like. Pretty easy swap going from the solid to the swivel. And I think you can see how the ability of the chuck to move about would help it have better contact with the back surface of the lens especially in higher powers, uh, things with high cylinder. Number five says no means no. A box of leap pads like this, uh, it has a thousand pads per roll. And I worked it out. If you do about eight jobs a day on average, five days a week, it looks like you need a new box of leap pads about every three months or so. I would urge you to fight the temptation to buy a head. Uh, so no means when the reps call on the phone and, hey, just check in to see if you need anything. I got a two for one sale, buy a box of leap pads, get one, at whatever. I would resist the temptation. Stores, the heat and the AC runs constantly in them. It's a very dry environment. As the roll of leap pads gets used up, they become dry, they become brittle. They have less adhesive properties. So I generally always kind of waited to the last minute to refresh my box of leap pads. 
just think it's a good practice. Number six says encourage biting or rather cribbing. Cribbing is a technique that we use at the lab. It greatly reduces the amount of material your edger has to take away. One thing, it saves wear and tear on the edger. For another, it because you've already got it rough shaped in, you're far less likely to have that conflict where the lens is coming in, hits that, and gets that leverage, gets that spin on the block that you're trying to avoid. There is a direct relationship to how thick the lens is, the higher the power it is. There's more surface area coming into contact, hence more friction, more force, more likelihood that the lens is gonna spin on the block for you. And here's an example. On the left is a cribbed lens, and on the right, same lens, same power, but not cribbed. Cribbing is a great idea. Just look for a great lab like Laramie K, and we'll do that for you. One last thing, most high-end, high-slip AR coats come with a factory-applied anti-slip layer. That's sometimes called a powder coat layer. You can't really see it or feel it, but you will notice that the lens is very hard to get clean the first time you try. You'll notice a film that is hard to get off that is the non-slip layer. For the current Laramie K AR menu, powder coat comes standard on our TKO Ultra, TKO Plus, Premium Colorless ICE or ICE, our Uverity Backside for Suns, and our DES or Digital Eye Strain Ultra and Plus. And that completes our sex education class for today. You do have homework. Be sure to read chapter five in your book, and I will see you again on Wednesday. Class is dismissed. I do hope you had some fun watching that one. I know we had some fun making it. More important, if you learned something, then by all means, please hit the like button. Please leave me a comment. I love getting them. One of those things I meant to mention was please don't try any home remedies to prevent slipping. First of all, they don't work. And second, you are likely to damage the AR coat. I will see you again next week. And remember for all your lens needs, including premium ARs with a great non-slip layer, please give us a call at Laramie K Optical.